Welcome to Around the Weird. Here's your host, the museum curator of the strange and unusual, Mr. Nothing. Thank you, mysterious voice, and welcome back to Around the Weird, a booktube channel where I talk about all the unusual and out-of-the-ordinary literature that I have found in my travels. Today it is Poetry Thursday, and I wanted to talk about a poem that focuses on the unusual sport of baseball, hitting balls into the crowd where it could possibly hit people, and running around bases. That's an unusual sport right there. Uh, So yeah, I wanted to talk about Casey at the Bat by Ernest Lawrence Thayer. For those who don't know, Ernest Ernest Lawrence Thayer was uh, a writer in the the 19th and 20th century. Uh, Although I I don't know about much about what he's written beyond uh, this poem, Uh, it appears that he wrote for the Harvard Lampoon and he got uh, some of his work published, including this poem, which he wrote under a pen name and then revealed after it had become successful, that it was him who wrote it. Always kind of suspicious, but I'm not saying he didn't write it. Uh, And then after that, no one really talks about what else he wrote, and I wasn't able to find anything, uh, even though I had had looked for some information. So maybe he, um, he did other things for the next, I don't know, 40 or... 50 years of his life. Um, but yeah, so that's um, that's what he did. But like, even though he didn't write much, I still say that he wrote uh, a very interesting piece of poetry. And this poem was recommended to me by my friend Bevan, who still hasn't created her booktube channel, but she, she is very interested in doing so. And I'm really surprised that I haven't found this poem before. I'll talk a bit more about that later. But like, this is, I, I heard about this poem, but I never read it. And I'm like, I, I'm surprised because it's actually a really good poem. Uh, but without further ado, let's talk about why that is. I will read the poem and then do a little bit of analysis and we will move on from there. Casey at the Bat. The outlook wasn't brilliant for the Mudville Nine that day. The score stood four to two with but one more inning to play. And then when Cooney died at first and Barrows did the same, a sickly silence fell upon the patrons of the game. A straggling few got up to go in deep despair. The rest clung to the hope which springs eternal in the human breast. They thought if only Casey could but get a whack at that. He put up even money now with Casey at the bat. But Flynn preceded Casey, as did also Jimmy Blake. And the former was a Lulu, and the latter was a cake. So upon the stricken multitude, grim melancholy sat, for there seemed but little chance of Casey's getting to the bat. But Flynn let drive a single to the wonderment of all, and Blake the much despised tore the cover off the ball. And when the dust had lifted and men saw what had occurred, there was Jimmy safe at second, and Flynn a hugging third. Then from five thousand throats and more there rose a lusty yell. It rumbled through the valley. It rattled in the dell. It knocked upon the mountain and recoiled upon the flat. For Casey, mighty Casey, was advancing to the bat. There was ease in Casey's manner as he stepped into his place. There was pride in Casey's bearing and a smile on Casey's face. And when responding to the cheers, he lightly doffed his hat. No stranger in the crowd could doubt, t'was Casey at the bat. Ten thousand eyes were on him as he rubbed his hands with dirt. Five thousand tongues applauded when he wiped them on his shirt. Then while the writhing pitcher ground the ball into his hip, defiance gleamed in Casey's eye, a sneer curled in Casey's lip. And now the leather-covered spear came hurtling through the air, and Casey stood a-watching it in haughty grandeur there. Close by the sturdy batsman, the ball unheeded sped, That ain't my style, said Casey. Strike one, the umpire said. From the benches, black with people, there went up a muffled roar. Like the beating of the storm waves on a stern and distant shore. Kill him! Kill the umpire, shouted someone on the stand. And it's likely they'd have killed him had not Casey raised his hand. With a smile of Christian charity, great Casey's visage shone. 
He stilled the rising tumult. He bade the game go on. He signaled to the pitcher, and once more the spheroid flew, but Casey still ignored it, and the umpire said, Strike two. Fraud, cried the maddened thousands, and Echo answered fraud. But one scornful look from Casey, and the audience was awed. They saw his face grow stern and cold, they saw his muscles strain, and they knew that Casey wouldn't let that ball go by again. The sneer is gone from Casey's lip, his teeth are clenched in hate, he pounds with cruel violence his bat upon the plate, and now the pitcher holds the ball, and now he lets it go, and now the air is shattered by the force of Casey's blow. Oh, somewhere in this favored land, the sun is shining bright. The band is playing somewhere, and somewhere hearts are light. And somewhere men are laughing, and somewhere children shout. But there is no joy in Mudville. Mighty Casey has struck out. And so that was Casey at the Bat by Ernest Lawrence Thayer. Uh, it's a pretty simple, straightforward poem. There's not much fancy going on in this, this poem. It's just... Uh, uh, two teams are playing in Mudville, uh, and apparently they're like the Mudville home team is down by a couple points, maybe one or two points, uh, and everyone's lamenting. Well, like Casey's not going to get a turn at the bat because Casey must be a grand player, and the some of the worst players are before him. But you know, fate uh, or luck, you know, strikes, and it turns out Casey does get his chance to bat. But unfortunately, the the end result is that Casey strikes out and the team goes home and loses in Mudville. Uh, it, what's interesting to me is this poem feels a lot like a troll, like a troll post, a shit post, as you see on, on Twitter. Like somebody sell it, building up something grand or something and then ultimately nothing. Like ultimately there's a loss. Like you're, you're selling Casey as this grand and, and wonderful baseball player and in the end he strikes out. Is he not as grand as people are led to believe? Do, is he actually bad but because of the you know the home team bias like they believe he's some great player and he strikes out. Is this just like the rare instance where Casey messes up? I don't know, uh, because this is a fictional team, but like it's this poem is is fun to read and like it, it it's also a bit hilarious because of how it ends on that sort of like that bummer note, even though you you, you built it up. And that's another aspect of the poem that I really love. Ernest Lawrence Thayer does a great job of building it up building it up until the point when, like, supposedly, like, this is supposed to be a victory for the team in Mudville. Allow me to read you um, a good quote. Yeah, so, like, Ernest Lawrence Sayer does a great job of building it up. Uh, like, he, in, the, in, the begin, in the intro of the, uh, in the first verse of the poem, he says, the outlook wasn't brilliant for the Mudville Nine that day. The, store, the score stood four to two with but one more inning to play. And then when Cooney died at first and Barrows did the same, a sickly silence fell upon the patrons of the game. So, you know, setting up the atmosphere, you know, things are not going well for the team. And then you move on to the first, fourth verse. And uh, uh, Thayer says, But Flint let drive a single to the wonderment of all, and Blake the much despised tore the cover off the ball. And when the dust had lifted and men saw what had occurred, there was Jimmy safe at second and Flynn a hugging third. And so you're building it up right there. Like you're anticipating that something good is going to happen with this game or something exciting is going to happen with this game. And this this builds up as Casey gets his chance to play because the audience is going wild at this point. They know that Casey is is good or they perceive him to be good. And so as, as Casey, you know, get strike one and strike two it's like something's got to give he's gonna he's gonna maybe you know hit a strike or home run or something like that um or like at least not hit the ball good enough that it's gonna bring in the runners home and they might win the game so what uh what it really gets gets get it highlights is this anticipation and this this building up is the 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 second to last verse where thayer says the sneer is gone from casey's lip his teeth are clenched in hate he pounds with cruel violence his bat upon the plate. And now the pitcher holds the ball and now he lets it go. And now the air is shattered by the force of Casey's blow. And it's just like 
that it's all coming down to this moment and Casey swings and he's not successful. And I have a, I, it's a really hilarious way to, you know, release all the tension that he's built up. I mean, it, it'd be the same if, um, if Casey had hit a home run, because it's, it, you're releasing the tension in some way. But I, I feel like the way that, um, uh, that Thayer did it is a lot more memorable. So, uh, you know, great job to him for not only building it up, but but also making his poem a bit more memorable than just simply hitting a home run, I guess. Anyway, those were my thoughts on Casey at the Bat by Ernest Lawrence Thayer. A big shout out to Bevan again, as she recommended this poem. And it's, I think I'm adding it to my, you know, my list of favorite poems, which I might actually release one day. Uh, probably not. Poetry is hard to really rank. Uh, but I think it is on my list of, you know, ones that I'll go to when I want to read something, you know, entertaining or fascinating. Uh, if you read this poem before, or you simply want to comment on my review, uh, do so below. Let's have a discussion about this um, and, you know, talk about Casey at the Bat. I'll put a link to it in the description, too, so that you you can all find it. Um, otherwise, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe so that more people can find out about this poem and Poetry Thursday. Maybe perhaps they'll, they'll want to contribute something. And until then, I wish you the best of luck in your weird and baseball-y travels. Farewell.